Here's another Clifford Carnicom discovery that was guaranteed, is guaranteed to cause concern. Filaments that contain red, red blood cells and also are observed to be producing red blood cells. And here's what sends this through the roof. These filaments are not just found in people with Morgellons. They're found in everyone, and they can be cultured to produce the same things, red blood, for instance. So you have to ask yourself, what's this doing in our bodies? This is all engineered stuff, filaments that have no match to nature, that are engineering blood. And we all contain these engineered materials. Now I'm going to throw in a video I found on carbon nanoforms. In it, you'll see similarities to the Morgellons tubules, their buds and their insides. And you'll also see the hexagonal skin on what are called fullerenes, named after Buckminster Fuller of the geodesic dome. Other forms with pentagons are the spherical forms of carbon, the fullerenes. There are different sizes, but the most famous is C60, made from 60 carbon atoms, which has the same shape as a football. Different sized fullerenes, one inside the other like Russian dolls, are known as onions because they resemble the vegetable in shape and number of layers. If nanocones are stacked on the top of each other, like ice cream cones, in the microscope they look like this, where the lines form a series of diagonal stripes. The image resembles a bit the skeleton of a fish, and this is why these structures are called herringbone nanotubes. By choosing an appropriate catalyst in the CVD, we can obtain nanocoils. This form, which could also have been called nanotelephone cords, is like a normal nanotube that for some unknown reason is coiled up during growth. When nitrogen is present during growth, tubes like these are obtained. They are multiple tubes, where every now and then, the inner tubes finish with almost flat caps. They might remind you of a stick of bamboo, and indeed, they are called bamboo-like tubes. There are also carbon nanoforms which are a mixture. For example, it's possible to fill a carbon nanotube with fullerenes. These are called pea pods because the fullerenes are like peas inside a nanotube pod. Recently, people have suggested the name of nanobuds for tubes which appear to have fullerenes or small sections of tube attached to their side, like a bud growing from the main stem of a plant. Another wacky name is nano wings, where a section of a nanotube wall is opened and the tube seems to have grown a pair of wings. These are just some of our favorite carbon nanoforms, but keep your eyes open for more. Fullerenes, which are spherical carbon molecules, C60, are amazing structures. They are crystals with a hollow interior composed of an exterior of hexagons and pentagons, a design that's now being used in nanotechnology. They react with elements across the periodic table and with free radicals. They are the holy grail of electrochemistry, insoluble in water. They function like micro batteries, releasing electrons. Their soft carbon interior becomes a super hard diamond when compressed, and when doped with other metals, they become superconductors. They can behave like metals, catalysts, and change their shape entirely when introduced to the halogens, chlorine, fluorine, and bromine. Now here's something that just came out of someone who's done extensive investigation into Morgellons, not only because she has it, but because she's doing her best to find out what it really is. Her website, morgellonsexposed.com, is worth spending hours on. She has not had anything quite like this come out of her before, and you're getting the first look at what seems to be a buckyball type of structure, a fullerene with the same hexagonal skin. Now I say type of structure. It was the, this was the side of a, size of a poppy seed, and it was covered with biofilm. I put it in a tissue to get the goo off, she told me, and then I broke it open. It had a dark, soft interior that looked like carbon. I spread it out to look at the hexagonal skin, and then I used colored lenses on the microscope to see if the hexagons would show up better. Now here, you can see, this is under colored lenses. So... This was the skin on top that covered that little round poppy seed size thing. If this is indeed a microelectronic device, what is it doing in the body? Jan said there had been this thing in her chin where she has a persistent lesion for a long time. I decided to get aggressive with it and work it out. 
This was the first fullerene type object that is one of Jan's own specimens. Here's the skin under the colored lens, but you also have to keep in mind that you're not looking at something that is a carbon-60 molecule. Fullerenes are, would not, real fullerenes would not be visible to the naked eye, but this was. All that can be said is it appears to be some kind of spher spherical form with a hollow interior and hexagon skin. Is it a larger version, some kind of machine form of a buckyball or fullerene? If we were electrochemistry wizards or nanotech engineers, we might know. This woman who found these insects, this one insect, there's two views of the same insect in a Morgellons lesion on July 26, 2012, wants to know why her body is sending forth complex living organisms, life forms that are from other species. Is her body serving as an incubator, a surrogate mother, the tubes and tissues making living creatures using her energy? Or is it the combination of bio goo and filaments and crystals and frequencies that somehow manages to synthetically orchestrate the creation of life inside a human body? Is this a form of experimentation? How is this even possible? Yet it's happening. She has found eggs in the tubes inside the lesions, and the lesions have issued larvae. Others report bugs and worms, caterpillars too. When I first heard about bugs coming out of people's bodies, I didn't believe it. One researcher told me that insects like the bio goo and they lay their eggs in it, and that was all, that Morgellons people were seeing the results of hatching eggs and thinking insects were coming out of their bodies. This was an explanation I could handle. But now, after seeing pictures of the tissue sacs and hearing from people who do not have Morgellons and have seen this proof themselves, I believe anything could be going on. So ignorant and unsuspecting is the world in general about what technology is up to, what it can produce, what it's playing with behind our backs. That's where I am. You could be anywhere else, and that's just fine. This is a journey into the terrain of suspending our ordinary beliefs. We are seeing intelligent materials imitating life to the point that some people are owned by the technology. It certainly looks like they are being used to make life and not in a natural way. A doctor who tried to help a Morgellons victim said in horror, she has no reserves. I'm afraid that if I try anything, her body couldn't take it. She's right on the edge. I don't even know how she's alive. She should be dead. And I said, she's not going to die. The technology won't let her die. It needs her body, her living body, to make its stuff. It's not going to let her die. She's owned by it. This was a new dawning for me and also for the doctor. We had not thought that technology could truly become the master and biology the slave. This is a new meaning for the word sustainability. Think about it. Technology will sustain itself on us. This is free energy, and the way it will be sold to us, machines using our energy, our blood flow, our heartbeat, our breathing, our motion, to draw their power from. I call it technobiosymbiosis. You can be sure this will be sold to us as a wonderful thing, a synergy, the most sensible way to run equipment. Your laptop will use your lap to run itself. Your phone will use your conversation. The machine will not be without you. You will be its engine. And social engineering will convince us all that this is just fantastic. In the meantime, the entire planet will have become intelligent. Your cells will be techno-biosymbiotic. Nanotechnology will be your doctor, chief of your immune system, keeping you going so the energy flow to the technology in you won't be interrupted. Your brain fog will be replaced by artificial intelligence, and you will have a smart house in addition to your other smart possessions, including your ever-present phone. A new organization of nature, a new world order with frequencies running everything. Humans will have been redesigned by technological selection. We are in the corridor of that very systematic process right now. We are transitioning from biological entities into techno-biological hybrids. Right now, we are participating in 
a giant global casting call. We are being tested and observed for our response to radiation and other alterations from the inside out and the outside in. You are seeing human decline, especially in the form of cancer, neurological and autoimmune disease. Many of us will succumb to the assaults from the inside out and the outside in, but some of us will make it. I want to say again that these success stories, the people who thrive, will be altered and capable of existing in the new matrix. Depopulation is only a way of whittling down, weeding out the failures. It's an alteration agenda, an adaptation experiment. We are living laboratories, very cheap and convenient when you consider it. So here are the basics of what's going on. Nature is messy, too many variations on a theme, too unpredictable. It has to be controlled, hybridized, reduced. By being surrounded by radiation, ingesting, genetic, ingesting genetically modified foods, and being given vaccines that also alter our biology and chemistry, we are being profoundly changed, biologically, electrically, and chemically. The new matrix rippling with stressors to our inherent biology is destroying our immune systems. This is why so many of us are sick. And without a functioning immune system, our bodies cannot reject the foreign materials and forces repeatedly being introduced to control, hybridize, and reduce us by way of large-scale programs, among them chemtrails, vaccines, GMOs, and all these forms of radiation. It's that simple. This has been a long, steady agenda designed to push our limits to make us fail. With our natural resilience gone, with children on vaccine schedules and using wireless technology, a whole new experiment is underway. What will the children's bodies do? How will they perform? It is all being watched and observed. And some of us will definitely make it. After this worldwide audition, the tests we're being put through now, there will be fewer of us on the planet, but we will be tailor-made for nanotechnology, adapted to radiation, piezoelectric, smart in the most current sense of the word, we will be predictable, responsive, and properly engineered for a smoothly running hive. So that's my talk. Thank you. Thank you.